alfalfa versus clover for raised beds. So, which green cover crop do earthworms really crave? Every gardener loves that moment of lifting mulch and spotting earthworms wriggling in the soil. It's like nature's approval stamp on your garden. Worms aren't just a happy sign, they are powerful partners in soil building, constantly improving fertility, aeration, and structure. But here's the question that matters most. If you want more worms in your raised beds, should you plant alfalfa or clover? Both are classic cover crops, but the way they interact with soil and attract earthworms is surprisingly different. Let's dig in. Why do earthworms deserve the spotlight? Well, it's easy to overlook earthworms because they quietly work underground. Yet these tiny creatures are the backbone of soil health. They act like natural rototillers, moving through the soil to break up compaction, improve drainage, and create pathways for air and roots. Their castings are like a slow-release fertilizer packed with nutrients plants can easily access. In raised beds, where the soil is often more contained and dries out faster than ground-level gardens, earthworms are even more important. The more you invite them in, the healthier your garden will be. That's where cover crops come in. Growing green manures such as alfalfa and clover not only prevents erosion and adds organic matter but also creates exactly the kind of environment that earthworms crave. Yet each crop has its own strengths. Alfalfa, the deep-rooted soil engineer. Alfalfa is often thought of as livestock feed, but in the garden it's a quiet powerhouse. Its roots dive incredibly deep, sometimes several feet into the soil. Even in raised beds where depth is more limited, those roots reach further than most common crops. This depth creates long-lasting soil channels that remain even after the plant is cut back, giving worms ready-made tunnels to explore and move through. The plant matter itself also appeals to worms, though in a slower way. Alfalfa is rich in cellulose, so it decomposes gradually. Worms don't swarm it right away, but they appreciate the long-term feast it provides. Over time, beds enriched with alfalfa become looser, darker, and able to hold moisture more effectively. It's the kind of environment worms love to settle into, even if the attraction is more gradual. For gardeners who want soil that improves steadily year after year, alfalfa is an excellent choice. Clover, the quick-serving soil snack. Clover takes a different approach to feeding both the soil and the worms. Whether you plant white, red, or crimson clover, this legume excels at fixing nitrogen, capturing it from the air and delivering it into the soil for plants to use later. But what earthworms really adore is the soft, tender foliage. Clover decomposes much faster than alfalfa, creating a burst of worm activity almost as soon as it's chopped down or begins to die back. Clover is like fast food for worms, immediate, abundant, and honestly, irresistible. It draws them in quickly, encouraging worm populations to multiply. For gardeners who want to boost worm activity in a shorter time frame, clover is often the go-to option. It's also more adaptable to shallow beds, where deep roots like alfalfas may not fit as comfortably. Ah, uh, if worms could cast their vote, they'd probably choose both crops, but for different reasons, of course. Clover offers an instant, tender meal that quickly attracts worms and energizes their activity. And then there's alfalfa, which offers a steady, slow-cooked buffet that sustains them over the long haul. In raised beds, this combination of quick attraction and long-term nourishment creates the perfect balance. Clover sets the stage, pulling worms in fast, while alfalfa ensures they keep working and thriving. Now it's important to remember that raised beds don't behave exactly like in-ground gardens. In the open earth, worms can move freely between different soil layers, searching for food and moisture. But in raised beds, the soil is contained, and worms are more dependent on what the gardener provides. That means your choice of cover crop has an outsized effect on worm populations. If you only rely on short-term crops, you may get quick worm activity, but not lasting soil improvement. On the flip side, if you only plant long-term crops, worms may come more slowly. The key lies in balance, really. While it's tempting to pick a side, the real soil sage approach is to grow alfalfa and clover together. This pairing gives worms everything they could want. Clover provides the quick decomposing foliage they love to munch on right away, while alfalfa supplies deeper root channels and cellulose-rich biomass that keeps them fed long after the clover is gone. Together, they create an ecosystem where worms can thrive in every season. Mixing these two also benefits the soil beyond just worm attraction. 
Clover brings in nitrogen, helping your plants grow lush and green, while alfalfa mines minerals from deeper soil layers and deposits them higher up where roots can access them. Your raised beds become a buffet not just for worms but also for your vegetables and flowers. How to make it work in practice Growing these crops in raised beds is simpler than you might think. The best results come when you plant them at the right time of year, allowing them to establish strong roots before the heat of summer or the chill of winter. Instead of pulling them up when it's time to plant vegetables, try chopping them down and leaving the plant matter on the soil surface. Worms will quickly move in to break it down, enriching your soil as they go. Moisture is another key detail. Worms thrive in damp soil and raised beds tend to dry out more quickly than the ground. If you want your worm population to explode, make sure the soil stays consistently moist, especially after cutting down your cover crops. Think of it as creating the perfect worm habitat, food, shelter, and water all in one place. Over time, rotating alfalfa and clover with other cover crops like vetch or rye can add even more diversity to your soil ecosystem. Worms love variety, and your raised beds will reward you with richer soil each season. Common Mistakes Gardeners Make One of the biggest mistakes is pulling out the roots of cover crops instead of letting them decompose in place. Worms love underground roots just as much as the foliage above. Another common issue is overcrowding, which can suffocate plants and slow decomposition. And finally, neglecting moisture is a surefire way to drive worms away, no matter how much organic matter you add. Avoiding these pitfalls ensures that your cover crops actually do what they're meant to, feed the worms, build the soil, and make your gardening life easier. The final verdict. So, which cover crop do earthworms crave more in raised beds, alfalfa or clover? The answer is both. Clover brings them in fast with soft, nitrogen-rich foliage, while alfalfa keeps them nourished for the long haul with deep roots and slower decomposition. If your goal is to build a worm paradise in your raised beds, the best strategy is not to choose one, but to combine them. Earthworms thrive on diversity just as gardens do. Give them both quick snacks and lasting meals, and they will repay you by transforming your soil into a rich, fertile foundation for everything you grow. Closing Thoughts Gardening is not just about what you plant above the soil, but also about what happens beneath it. By planting alfalfa and clover, you're not just feeding your raised beds, you're feeding the worms that feed your soil. Next time you plan your garden, Think about what your underground allies crave. Keep them happy, and they'll keep your soil thriving. If this soil wisdom speaks to you, make sure to subscribe to Soil Sage Chronicles for more gardening secrets that keep your beds alive and abundant. And don't forget to share this with a fellow gardener who dreams of building a worm-rich paradise. Together, we can grow gardens that truly thrive, one wriggle at a time.